ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Jack Allen's five-year prison term had ended. The 22-year-old ex-convict was hurrying across the walled yard of Territorial Prison for the last time. He had nearly reached the big gate when Chaplain Davis called to him. Jack! Jack, wait a minute. Chaplain Davis. Well, I hope you stopped to see me before you left. Well, I, I figured you'd be busy. Not too busy to say goodbye and wish you luck. Thanks, Jim. I'll miss you, Jack. But I'm glad you're leaving. You going home to Texas? No. Isn't your mother waiting there for you? Yes, Chaplain, but I... Well, I have some business to take care of before I go home. Now, Jack, if you're thinking of that vow you made... I made that vow over my dad's dead body. I swore I'd get the men who killed him. You got one of them. You killed Pete Egan. Yes, and for that, the law called me a murderer. All right, I'm a murderer. Now, wait, Jack, wait. You've paid in full for that. And because of your age and certain extenuating circumstances, you paid a low price, only five years. Now you're square with the world. Go home, Two forget... killers are walking around free. They killed my dad. I saw them do it. They beat the law because of lying alibis. Amos and Ozark Egan have got to pay. Jack, if you take the law into your own hands, you'll hang. Chaplain Davis, I don't care what happens to me. The Egan brothers waylaid Dad and me while we were driving cattle. They killed Dad, wounded me, and stole the cattle. I'm going to get them, and nothing can change my mind. You'd understand if you'd lost someone as close to you as Dad was to me. I do understand, Jack. Ten years ago, I lost a sister who was very dear to me. Did you see her murdered? No. She ran away from home. She thought she was in love. I was much older than Anne. I tried to tell her what everyone knew about the man. That he was a gambler, a drinker, a cheat. Yes, a petty thief. But despite all I said, my sister eloped with that man. I looked for them, but without success. Jack, if I'd caught that man, I... I think I might have taken the law into my own hands. Didn't you ever see your sister again? No. No, I completed my studies and became a minister. And in helping others, I've helped myself. I found peace of mind. And son, 
I've learned that there is retribution. There is a higher court that meets out justice to those who escape punishments in man-made courts. If my sister's life was ruined, the man will pay. And so will the men who killed your father. I intend to make sure they'll pay. I made a vow. But Jack, from here I'm you... going to Clover City. That's where the Egans lived five years ago. If they're still there, I shall pray that some power intervenes to keep you from committing two more murders. Jack's personal property was returned when he was released from prison. He had a gun and cash enough to buy a horse and other equipment. Two days of travel brought him to the northern edge of Clover City in late afternoon. At the same time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly across cactus-studded plains, approaching the community from the south. They were not far from town when they saw a boy of nine seated on a rock. He held one bare foot in grimy hands, while great tears rolled down his cheeks. Hello there, son. What's your trouble? I can't walk on it. Oh, yeah, me take a look. Maybe help. You shouldn't try to walk barefoot on ground like this. I never had shoes. Oh, me see trouble. Cactus needle. Stick in foot. Break off. Me get it out. Are you an outlaw, mister? <laughs> no. Then why do you wear a mask? <laughs> because I don't want anyone to see my face. My uncles sometimes cover their faces, but they use bandanas. Oh? Oh, me? Me try not hurt. Get cactus now. Hold still. Oh. There, there. Me got it now. Good for you, Toto. Now put your foot down, son. See how it feels. Oh, golly. It's fine now. It doesn't hurt a bit. Oh, what's your name? Bob. Bob Egan. Where do you live, Bob? In Crow Valley. Over that way. Oh, yes, I know where it is. About three miles west of here. If you'd like to ride on Silver with me, I'll take you home. Silver? Is that the name of your horse? Yes. I'd like to ride him, mister, but I'm not going home. I'm never going home, never again. Running away, huh? Well, that'll make your mother unhappy. Mama's dead. So's my father. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Mom died last year. My father was killed in a gunfight a long time ago. I reckon it's five or six years. You uh, mentioned your uncle's. My Uncle Ozark and Uncle Amos. I lived with them in the valley, but I'm running away from them. Why you run away? They kept me locked in the cabin all the time. Sometimes they're away all night, and when they come back at daybreak, I cook breakfast for them. But they don't let me go anywhere, even when they're home. My Uncle Amos beats me if I try to go away from the cabin. You said your uncles sometimes cover their faces. Yes, sir. I heard them talking about it when they thought I was asleep. Where do they go when they're away at night? I think they must go to buy cattle, because I've seen them return at daybreak when I've watched through the window. I've seen them drive cattle past the cabin and into a canyon. Does this happen very often? No, sir. It only happened two or three times. Has it uh, happened recently? Oh, yes. They bought some cattle just a few days ago. Oh, golly. Now I'll get it. Here comes my Uncle Amos. He's looking for me. And when he sees me here, uh, he'll... Now, don't worry, Bob. But you don't know how mad will be, mister. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, now, I've been worried about you, Bobby. What are you doing here with a masked man and a redskin? Uh, I, I just met them, Uncle Amos. Well, why'd you leave the cabin? I'm running away. Now, son, that's no way to be. Ozark and I have tried to be good to you. You're not good to me. You've beaten me and, and you keep me locked up no, and... No, no, What's the idea of making up stories like that? You, uh, get aboard my horse. I'll take you home. I don't have to go home with him, do I, mister? Please let me stay with you and Tano. Bob, if this man is your uncle, you'll have to go with him. Yes, I'm his uncle, all right. The boy must have been loco to try to run away. Here, give me your hand, Bobby. Uh, there you are. We may see you again, Bobby. Get up there. Bye, mister. Bye. Me not like feller named Amos. Amos Hubby. Nor do I, Tano. I think he lied when he said he was worried about Bob. And maybe him worried Bobby talked too much. Well, I had the same feeling. He uh, didn't question my mask. Plenty bad for little feller to have uncle like that. Maybe there's some way we help him. Sounds as if his uncles are stealing cattle. Me think same thing. If that could be proved and they were jailed, the judge in Clover City would have to find a good home for the boy. We try prove Egan Russell cattle? Yes, Toto. Easy, steady, big fellow. <sighs> 
First, we'll need information. I'll wait at the edge of town while you go to the sheriff's office. Ask the sheriff if there's been any rustling around here. Easy, Scott. Easy, Fanny. Then we'll go to Crow Valley and try to learn more about Bob's uncles who wear masks and buy cattle at night. Monsilver! Get him up, Scott! Meantime, Jack Allen had finished making a number of inquiries in Clover City. After learning that Amos and Ozark Egan lived in Crow Valley, he left town. It was twilight when he drew rain at the top of a steep slope. He saw a cabin in the valley below. Oh, who there? See? Come on, boy. Leading his horse, he made his way downhill. He found a dense stand of underbrush at the bottom of the slope some distance from the cabin where he could conceal himself and his horse. Screened by the brush, he took up a position where he could watch the cabin. He planned to wait until darkness was complete, then move closer to the cabin to look inside. He wanted to make sure that the Egan brothers were there. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling over the same route a short time later. Was the uh, sheriff in his office, Tonto? Ah, uh, him there, Kimosabe. Me ask him about rustlers. Has cattle been stolen in the last few weeks? Sheriff say there are many raids. Him think small gang rustle cattle. Maybe two, three men. Two or three men, huh? Not right. Him say only small number cattle stolen each time. Then the Egan brothers may be the rustlers. Ah, their valley at foot of slope. Who's it? Who? Yes, and there's the Egan's cabin. Ah, someone light lamp inside. I wonder if both of the Egan brothers are there. How we get close to cabin to find out? Amos Egan mistook me for an outlaw. Mm, that right. We go to the cabin posing as outlaws. Oh, why we do that? To try to win Egan's confidence. I want to learn more about their activities. A uh, boy in cabin, Kimosabe. Yes, he probably is. He think Bobby feel plenty bad. Him learn you outlaw. Him think you're friend. I'll not deceive him any longer than necessary. Come on, Zulu. Come, Scott. Come, Bobby. From his place of concealment, Jack Allen could see the masked man and Toto. He watched them guide their horses downhill, wondering if they worked with the Egan brothers. Deciding to wait and see what the newcomers would do, he moved stealthily to one side hoping he would not be discovered when the two men reached the bottom of the slope. Meanwhile, in the cabin in the valley, Ozark and Amos Egan sat at a crude table eating their supper, while young Bobby hustled to keep their yeah. plates and coffee cups right. filled. Yeah, yeah. Amos was telling his brother about finding Bobby with a masked man and an Indian. That masked outlaw looked like a good gunslinger, Ozark. I wish we had a man like him working with us. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you say the Indian's name was Tonto? Yeah, that's right. Isn't it, Bob? That's right, Uncle Amos. Did you see the horses? Yeah, I saw them. The masked man had a white stallion. White stallion? Named Silver? Well, how'd you know, Uncle Ozark? <coughs> was the engine riding the paint? Yeah, he was. What about it? Uh, you jughead. That masked man's no outlaw. He's more dangerous to outlaws than all the lawmen in the West. What do you mean? He's a lone ranger. What? No. A lone ranger? What'd you tell him, Bobby? Well, I... Answer me. Let go. Let go. You hurt my arm. Speak up. I told him I lived here with you. What else? Did he ask any questions about us? Yes. Please don't twist my arms. So... What'd you tell him? I, I told him you brought cattle at night. And... Why, you... What'd you say we did with the cattle? I, I, I said you took it to the canyon. Why, Ozark, you... if the masked man's a lone ranger, he'll put two and two together. He'll know all he about... He knows the answer. Maybe he'll go to the law. We'll hunt him and his Indian friend and kill him before they have a chance. No, no! Ozark, listen. Uh, he never barks unless someone's nosing around this place. I'll look out the window and see who it is. Well, who is it? Two men riding this way. Recognize him? It's getting dark. Sort of hard to make out their faces at that distance. Oh, I can't. Ozark, yeah. it's the mask man. So that's a lone ranger. His Indian pal's with him. Ozark, this is our chance to get both of them. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. When Amos Egan saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto approaching the cabin in the valley, he grabbed a six-gun from a nearby shelf. The outlaw was beside himself with rage. He smashed the glass in the cabin window with a barrel of his six-gun. I'll get him this time. No, no, don't shoot him. Please don't shoot him. As Amos fired, Bobby threw himself against his uncle, grabbing his gun arm and sobbing. Don't shoot the Lone Ranger. Don't kill him. Get back. Hey, Amos, you jughead. You can't hit him with a six-gun. Grab your rifle and wait until they're closer. The wild shot had been a warning to the Lone Ranger and Tonto. They turned Silver and Scout quickly and raced toward the base of the slope. Head for the shoulder of those rocks, Tonto. Head for the Oh, easy, fella. Easy, fella. I'm shoot with rifles. We reached these rocks just in time. Get your hands what? up, mister. He must have you two, Indian, you're both covered. We'd better do as he says, Tonto. Uh -huh. Who are you? My name's Jack Allen. Are you working with the Egan brothers? Working with them. Not by a jugful, mister. But that mask marks you as one of their breed. If you've been behind these rocks for any length of time, you saw them fire on us when we approached the cabin. I saw someone open fire on you, but I didn't know for sure it was the Egan's. There's no other cabin in this valley. It must have been the Egan's. That puts you on my side. I'll holster my gun. I'm here to kill Amos and Ozark Egan. Uh, why do you want to kill Egan brothers? They murdered my dad. Well, when did that happen? Nearly six years ago. There used to be three Egan brothers. I spent five years in territorial prison for killing one of them. Now I'm back for the other two. You'll hang for murder. That doesn't change my mind. He must have a look. Someone opened cabin door. Well, it's Bobby. Ah, him come this way. Fellow named Amos, try stop him. Come back here. Come back, I tell you. Amos Egan stood in the open doorway of the cabin, sharply outlined against the lamp-lit room behind him. Instead of stopping at his uncle's command, Bobby tried to run even faster. He was making a final desperate effort to reach the Lone Ranger. As if he had read the boy's mind, Amos Egan drew his gun. The masked man snatched his rifle from its scabbard. Amos shouted a final warning. Oh. Amos was about to fire when the bullet from the Lone Ranger's rifle hit him in the shoulder. The shock sent the outlaw staggering back into the room. He stumbled and fell. The three men standing at the base of the slope didn't know that in falling, Amos had struck the table. The oil lamp had smashed to the floor. You'll have to bring that boy to safety. Cover me, Toto, while I go after Bobby. Easy, ah. steady, fella. Monsilver! Watching the cabin, Toto saw Ozark appear at the window. The Indian fired. Ozark drew back. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger was approaching Bob Egan. The masked man leaned far from the saddle. Easy, Silver, steady! Gripped the boy firmly and lifted him off the ground. Then he brought Silver around in a tight turn. Monsilver! And went back to the safety of the rocks at the bottom of the slope. Oh, easy. Steady now. Oh, golly. I didn't know what was happening. There you are, Bobby. Uh, easy, steady, Silver. Your uncles were going to shoot you, Bobby. Thanks for covering me, Toto. Uh -huh. They're going to kill you and Tonto, too, mister. They think you're the Lone Ranger. Is that true? Uh, yes, Bob. Lone Ranger? My uncle said they'd kill you before you could tell the law about them. I had to warn you that they'd shoot you and Tonto on sight. Well, thanks for the warning, Bob. <sighs> Do your uncles know you told Toto and me about them buying cattle at night? Yes, and they're awful mad that I told you about it. They were scared, too. If they're guilty, they should be. Sonny, are you related to those Egan polecats? Uh, yes, sir. They're my uncles. Well, I reckon it's not your fault. He must have you. Look at cabin. It's on fire. I wounded one of those men. I better investigate to make sure they're able to get out easy, steady, big fella. <laughs> Montfilly! <laughs> The Lone Ranger raced across the darkening valley. He drew Silver to a rearing halt. Oh, Silver, oh, easy. Near the rapidly burning building and hit the ground running. The front of the cabin was in flames. He circled to the back to try to find another entrance. The back door was open. A glance inside showed that neither Amos or Ozark were there. By that time, Jack and Tonto had arrived with Bobby, who rode double on the Indian's horse. Oh, 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 oh. Are they in there? No. Their horses are gone. They must have gotten out the back door and headed for the canyon. What canyon? I know the place. It's back of the cabin. I heard my uncles talking about it lots of times. They built a shack there. They said it's the best hiding place in the world because there's only one way to get in and out. Are you sure of that, Bob? I'll take you there. You'll see for yourself. Instead of taking us to the entrance, lead us to the canyon rim. We'll look over the land from there. The moon was beginning to rise when the riders halted on the upper rim of the canyon. Bobby, who was riding double on Scout, pointed his finger and said, There's the canyon down there. We'll dismount and go over to the edge. Easy, yeah. Take it easy, Bobby. Take it easy. Uh, you'll be able to get a good view from here. There's a shack. 
And look at those steers at the far end of the canyon. See the entrance? Yes, you were right, Bob. That narrow gap is the only entrance. Those skunks could sit in their cabin and hold off an army. As long as they stay in the cabin, we can't hit them from here. And there's no way to get to them without being shot. This cliff is not so steep. It's over 40 feet. If a few men rode along the trail leading to the entrance, The Egans I... could poke their rifles through the window of the shack and pick the riders off one by one. Toto, ride for the sheriff in Clover City. Try to persuade him to form a posse. Tell him you'll lead him to a hidden herd of stolen cattle. Be taken to entrance the canyon? Yes, and uh, leave your lariat with me. I may need it. Mm -hmm. Here. Here. Oh, thanks. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Get him up, scout. Mister, those lawmen will ride right into a gun trap. Not if someone reaches the back door of the shack and takes the Egans by surprise. How can anyone reach the back door when there's no way into the canyon? I'll show you, Jack, as soon as I've tied these lariats together. Why do... You mean you'll drop those lariats over the edge, then slide down them? Yes, that's right. Oh, the base of the cliff covered by darkness. But when the moon's fully risen, they'll spot you for sure. I hope Tonner will be back with the sheriff by that time. Now the rope's ready. Now I'll fasten it to that tree. Be careful, mister. If my uncle see you, they'll kill you. Don't worry, Bob. You stay with Jack until I return. Gosh, I hope they don't see him. So do I. Bob, are those two fellas the only relatives you have? I have another uncle, but I don't know where he is. He's my mother's brother. Uncle Ozark and Uncle Amos are my dad's brothers. What happened to your dad? He was shot in a gunfight. I reckon he wasn't much different from my Uncle Ozark or Amos. Bob, was your dad's name Pete Egan? Oh, yes. Did you know him? Yeah. Yeah, I knew him. Bob, the masked man's reached the end of the rope. I'm going down there and give him a hand. If you go, I'm going too. You stay here. The Lone Ranger told me to stay with you. I can let myself down hand over hand. All right, come on. A short time later, Ozark Egan and his brother Amos stood before the front window of the shack watching the canyon entrance. The moon had gradually risen, illuminating the narrow gap with a brilliant light. Neither of the two outlaws suspected that the Lone Ranger, Jack and Bobby, were crouching behind sheltering rocks in the rear of the shack. From their place of concealment, they heard approaching hoofs. The Egan brothers also heard them. The mass man and the engine must be coming here, Amos. That sounds like more than two riders. Maybe there's a posse with them, huh? They'll have to string out in single file to get through the gap. Pook your rifle through that window and get set. Uh, we'll be able to pick them off easy. Uh, draw a bead. Let the first man through the entrance have it. Drop your rifle. Hey, the back door. It's a mass man. Get him, Ozark. Oh, he did. You already have a wounded shoulder, Amos. You want a broken arm? Oh, I'll not make trouble. <laughs> You all right? Yes, Toto. Me bring the sheriff. So you're the masked man the engine told me about. Yes, Sheriff. Here are two prisoners for you. Yeah, the Egan boys, huh? I always thought they were crooked, but I never could get anything on them. I'm sure that if you examine the brands on some of the steers at the end of the canyon, you'll find that they came from several different ranches. If that's the case, they're the rustlers. I figured only two or three men were involved, but I never could catch the thieves or find their hideout. You could have found it the same way we did, Sheriff. We spotted it from the top of that cliff. Aye, the only way to that cliff is past Egan Place in the valley. Amos and Ozark made sure no one ever got that far. Hank, Slim, yeah, yeah. put handcuffs on these two. Right. Are my uncles going to jail, Sheriff? That's right, Bob. But I don't know what we'll do with you. Don't you have any other folks? I have another uncle. I've never seen him, but I have a picture of him. My mom kept it with her, but she gave it to me before she died. She said he's my Uncle Tom Davis. Uh -huh. She was always ashamed to write to him on account of my dad being crooked. Here's my uncle's picture. He's a minister. Minister? You say his name's Davis? Oh, yes. Let's see that picture. It's Chaplain Davis. Do you know him, Jack? I know him. This picture must have been taken a long time ago, but the chaplain hasn't changed much. He's a territorial prison. I'll take Bobby to him. Would you? Oh, gosh. Gosh, that's great, isn't it, mister? It's fine news, Bob. Toto and I will go as far as the prison with you and Jack. Good. Now my deputies and I will herd these Egan varmints to jail. Thanks, mister. You too, Toto. We were glad to help you, Sheriff. Right, Sheriff. Come on, boys. Let's get going. Two days later, Jack Allen entered Chaplain Davis's office at Territorial Prison. Jack, you're back? Not because I'm in trouble, Chaplain. Did you change your mind about killing the Egans? I went after them, and I got them. Oh, I... I prayed that you wouldn't commit murder. A man on a white horse changed my plans. Hmm? 
Before I knew what had happened, he fixed it so as we got Amos and Ozark legally. Legally? They're in jail for rustling. Chaplain, I'm here because of Pete Egan's son. Pete Egan was the man you were convicted of killing five years ago. That's right. I met his son when I went after Pete's brothers. The boy's mother's dead. Oh, then he's an orphan. Yes, he stayed with Amos and Ozark. I reckon he had a tough life with them. Too bad he has no other relatives. He had this picture of another uncle, his mother's brother. He said his mother gave him this picture just before she died. I, I think you'll recognize it. Well, let's see it, Jack. Well, great Scott. Eh? You must have had that picture taken 10 or 12 years ago, Chaplain. I had it taken for Anne, my sister. Bobby's her son. He's outside your office now. Well, I must see him after all these years. Why? You, you're my Uncle Tom. Well, you... You know me. I know you from your picture. Mom talked about you all the time. Oh, gosh, I'm glad to find you, Uncle Tom. I want to stay with you, if you'll let me. Let you? Oh, Bobby, we'll be together from now on. Jack, how can I ever thank you? Don't thank me, Chaplain. Thank the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.